So let's get into that French horn part. Uh, the first thing about this is it's interesting how it comes in. It comes in on the downbeat. And then it comes in on the upbeat of three and then just continues from there. One, two, three, and. It's just really, really cool to play. So there's not a lot of technical explanation needed, but um, obviously uh, alternate picking is important, but it doesn't have to be exclusively alternate picking. So just find whatever works for you, okay? So I'm just simply gonna play it nice and slow and put the tab up on the screen for you. So out the gate, you can see what's happening is some very staccato notes. You've got those two long notes, so to speak. And then you're in, right? And so what you want to do is you really want to pop these notes and make them as staccato as possible. And you can see my fingers are just constantly coming off and on the string pressure. And then it becomes more the notes just falling into each other. All right. And finally, one last time, everything nice and slow. So there you go with the French horn part, and here is the original tutorial for you. Hi guys, Howard here with For No One from the Beatles, a Paul McCartney composition, I'm sure. And uh, for those of you who watch the channel on a regular basis, you know that I love taking keyboard tunes and putting them on guitar, working out some kind of arrangement for it. So that's exactly what I've done here. Uh, the song's in the key of B, so I've got the uh, guitar capoed at the second fret uh, to make this piece feasible on guitar, and I'm in standard tuning, okay? So uh, let's dive right in. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we've got a string of chords, all of which are pretty simple. We've got an A major triad, five on the B string, six on the G string, seven on the A string. We want to hit the open A string, and then play that triad three times. And you can see that I'm popping the chord so that it sounds nice and uh, staccato. Okay. Then we move to the 4th fret, 4th fret from the capo, on the 6th string, and we're forming a C-sharp minor with the remaining fingers. So that's the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th fret from the capo on the B string, and then 6 and 6 on the G and the D. So we hit that bass note, and we pop the chord the same way. That might be a little bit tricky, but I think with a little practice you can get that, because you want the bass note to sustain through that chord. So now we have. All right, and then we move the bass note to the second fret from the capo down here. And the best thing to do is just bar across all six strings and then place your ring finger on the uh, D string at the fourth fret. Now that one's gonna be 
tougher to pop, right? Because uh, you're barring and those notes are gonna sustain through. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can mute it very quickly with your pick. Just coming back like that. But I do kind of pop that finger anyway. I think it kind of helps a little bit, but it's hard to get that one to pop just as much as the two previous ones because you are barring straight across. But at the tempo it's played, uh, you shouldn't notice it too much. Right, that sounds kind of okay. And uh, sorry about the rattling and buzzing, but sometimes with the capo on it just kind of tortures the guitar, okay? <laughs> so once again, we have fourth chord in line here is uh, just think of it as an A, a standard A bar chord, and uh, it's an open E string, so it's like an A over E, just like that C sharp over the G sharp. So we have and then we move to a standard D chord, so now we are swinging off of the D string and uh, playing the first three strings staccato. So that one's pretty easy to do because you can let that D string ring and, and pop the chord, okay? And then we go to a G chord and I'm playing it like this. I'm barring across all six strings at the third fret. And then of course I'm playing the fourth fret on the G string and then the fifth fret on the D string. So we hit the bass note and we wanna connect with the B, the G and the D. And again, you can mute in the right hand really quickly if you want to, or just kind of pop the chord again at tempo. Uh, you don't really notice it too much. It sounds pretty good. But you do want to try to get that bass note to ring out. So we move from the D to that. to that regular A chord shape, and I'm swinging off of the A string now. And that's another one that's easy to make staccato because you can just pop your finger off and on. And as a note, you'll notice that the last stroke of each chord, it's actually sustained, so you're not playing. You want to try to let it ring through as much as possible, and again, at tempo, you won't have a lot of time for that, but it does make a difference in the way it sounds. So there's only two sections to the whole song, and this is the uh, A section. So let's play through all of that again, nice and slow. you play that A chord twice at the end and then you repeat that whole section again so then we move to the B section we could do it the same way we could just go but I think it's more interesting to kind of grab a little bit of that keyboardy thing where the notes are just kind of rolling around so this is a cross picking pattern and uh, it's played like so we're on a B minor chord You can see the tab up on the screen, but let me explain what I'm doing in the right hand. So I'm playing down, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, up. And then we move to an F sharp seventh chord. And uh, again, I'm playing this by barring straight across at the second fret, all six strings. I'm gonna play the same picking pattern I just played, the same cross picking pattern, but I'm going to skip the A string. So we have from the B minor to the F sharp seven. sounds kind of nice, very classical, if you will. Now, this next part I'm going to explain really carefully because it took me a moment to work out exactly how I wanted to do this and capture it. So,
So what I did is I came back to the B minor chord and all I play is the A string, then I swing down to the B string with an upstroke and then a downstroke on the D string. So coming off of the F dominant seventh chord we have just that movement right there. You don't even have to put your pinky down or even bar if you don't want to. And then we start the hybrid picking. Now you can see that on the screen I'm using my pick for the uh, bassier notes and of course using this finger uh, to pluck simultaneously the other strings. So it's up on the screen with the tab which is the easiest way to explain this. But let me do that again real slow. Right? So when you land that last one you want to get right back into the shape of the B minor chord and finish out the arpeggio that you would normally play. And what I mean by that is we want to go so you can see that anticipation, if you will, on the upbeat takes the place of those first two strokes of the arpeggio that we played a moment ago. it like that um, even though you can hear again on the recording three times before you go to that but I like playing the notes of the chord for guitar it seems to work out a little bit better because you don't lose the sustain of those B notes so let me play that whole section nice and slow okay and then we'll explain the tail end of it So the chord at the end is an E suspended, uh, second fret A string, second fret D string, second fret G string, and I'm not playing the first two strings with this. Hit the top four strings, then release your pinky to the first fret on the G string, and I just play those two notes, the D string and the G string, okay? And that's it. Those are the uh, two sections of the song, and that's the way it's played. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and uh, I'll try to do more stuff from the Revolver album because it's so incredible, right? One of the most eclectic albums ever. So all the best to everyone, and we'll see you guys real soon.